Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 27 and we're going to be looking at organic acids and bases. This particular outcome is around investigating the differences between an organic acid and an organic base. So we just want to have a look at some of the important functional groups that we've looked at previously and see if there's any way that we can use our knowledge of acids and bases to classify these substances. So organic acids probably the easiest one to start with because we've looked at these before. So we want to tap into our Bronsted-Lowry definition and also potentially our Lewis definition of acids. So you remember that our Bronsted-Lowry definition is based on acids being proton donors. That is, they have the capacity to donate an H plus ion. And our Lewis definition of acids as being lone pair acceptors. So that is where we find uh, two electrons that are not uh, part of a bond, but are part of an atom. So where we find that lone pair of electrons on an atom, somewhere in the molecule, that gives us some indication of whether or not that particular molecule can act as either an acid or a base. So let's have a look at one of the most uh, common ones that we've looked at up until this point, which is acetic or ethanoic acid. Being ethanoic, of course, means that it has two carbons, and these two carbons must include this functional group, which is our acid functional group, the CWOH group. Now we know that there is that possibility that this hydrogen here, um, which is polar bonded to the oxygen uh, through a polar covalent bond, can actually be released from this molecule and therefore as an H plus ion, and that would leave the oxygen behind it with a negative charge. So therefore we would form an ion, an anion in this case. And in fact, we would call it the acetate or ethanoate ion. Okay, that means that with an increase in the H plus concentration or at least the hydronium concentration in a solution, we know the polarity of this molecule means that it will be miscible with water. So therefore we would expect an increase in the concentration of H plus ions and therefore a decrease in the pH and so therefore we would have an acid solution. And that's probably the easiest one of these to try and I guess analyze in terms of its acidic or basic nature. But what about some of the other molecules? Well, one of the other groups that we've looked at are the amines. Now the amines are a group that have an NH2 group attached to a carbon and then um, either multiple carbons in the chain that the um, nitrogen is attached to, or perhaps even um, additional carbon chains coming off the nitrogen itself. So, of course, when we're naming these compounds, we name them on the basis of those the locations of those chains or side groups. But one of the important things to remember about nitrogen is that nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell. Now, three of those electrons are bonded three bonding electrons. But what that means is that we have two electrons that actually are a lone pair, uh, uh, two electrons that don't actually get involved in bonding. So what that of course means is that we have a possibility of attracting something like a proton. So if this is capable of accepting a proton, then it uh, falls within the Bronsted-Lowry definition of a base, but also the fact that it has that lone pair of electrons which could be donated to another species means that it falls into the Lewis definition of a base. It's a Lewis base. What does that look like in practice? Well, what that means is that if it is capable of accepting a proton, then this is the um, change in the structure that we see as a result of that process occurring. Of course, if it accepts this from something like water, then what it will do is um, accept that proton and um, reduce that water molecule to a hydroxide ion. And of course, that will increase the concentration of the hydroxide ions 
and that will increase the pH, which means we will therefore have a basic solution. So the amines are capable of acting as uh, bases according to both the bronsted lowry and also the Lewis definitions of bases. How do we make comparisons for all of our other groups? One thing that I think is very important for you to do is to start to think about this, um, the importance of the pKa value. So we introduced pKa when we were looking at um, our acid-base reactions module. And we looked at it in a little bit of detail then, but we need to keep um, revisiting that from time to time to get a little bit of an idea about what that tells us about relative strengths of acids and base solutions. So I've listed here a couple of compounds with some important functional groups uh, in order to give you a bit of an idea about where each of these is likely to sit. Now, the first thing that's probably important for you to notice is the pKa value for one of our very strong acids, such as the hydrochloric acid, uh, actually is a negative value. Uh, and that's telling us it's very strong acidic nature. Something like ammonia, we also know is a weak base, um, has a very, very high pKa. And it acts as a base. We know that it acts as a base, but we also know that it's a weak base. It's not a strong base such as um, sodium hydroxide would be, for example. The other thing that we, we need to remember here is that once we, once we start to talk about substances in terms of their basic nature, we're probably not going to uh, measure them in terms of their pKa, because this is something that does relate to the acid equilibrium constant or the acid ionization constant. Um, so therefore, substances that are behaving more like bases don't tend to um, be expressed in this kind of term, but at least it gives us a little bit of an idea about where the equilibrium lies and what sort of substances are likely to be more acidic or more basic. Of most interest, of course, is where water occurs. And we know that water has the capacity to act as both an acid and a base. It's amphiprotic in that sense. Um, and its value of, of the pKa is about 14. So therefore, when we look at our primary alcohols, um, our aldehydes and our amides, all of those have values that are very close to that. So there's no particular acidic or basic nature to any of these. And of course, there's a difference between being a polar molecule and having an acidic or basic nature. I guess one of the most important things for us to do is to look at one of the key uh, groups and something that we will look at a little bit later um, in terms of its ability to polymerize are the amino acids. Now, amino acids have both the amine group and the acid group within the molecule. And of course, this means that when an, uh, an amine end of an amino acid um, comes close to an acid end of an amino acid, then we can have a bond forming um, as water is released from the molecule, and we actually form an amide bond. This amide bond is a peptide bond, and when you put lots of them together, you get a polypeptide, which may also uh, produce, in terms of its secondary or tertiary structures, uh, a protein. This is probably all you really need to look at in terms of um, acid and base nature of organic compounds, but it's worth having a table with a few of these values. And of course, you can look at the pKb values as well if you wish, um, just to have a look and see if you can notice any patterns or trends. But at least um, listing the pKa values allows you to start to identify some of these strong acids, particularly things like acetic acid that we're familiar with, and uh, hydrochloric acid, where we know the nature of these acids and also whether they are strong, as in the case of hydrochloric, or weak, as in the case of acetic, but definitely of uh, an acidic nature. As we looked at for the amine, the ethyl amine has a much higher value. It gets closer to water. And therefore, that's, that um, strongly acidic nature starts to disappear as, we, as these values get higher. And as we've seen, the amines do have the capacity to act as bases, both under the bronsted lara definition and under the Lewis definition. So have a bit of a practice for these, and thanks for watching.